A down south Loch Ness monster? What do Daniel and Natalie think? You can discount a lot of what eyewitnesses saw who saw the creature from a long distance as perhaps a log or an alligator or an optical illusion. But in the case of Barry's sighting, he saw it for 20 minutes and it was nearly almost all out of the water. You just can't dispute that. Mm. And this is somebody who's had years and years experience in that in those waterways. He's seen all the animals that are there, he's seen the alligators, he's seen the manatees, he's seen all the fish, all the sharks that are there. He knows if he sees something and he doesn't know what it is, for 20 minutes you have to take his word for it. It's really just an oasis for wildlife, isn't it? I, the, the alligators everywhere, the manatees, it's just so alive when you're there, the noises that you hear during the day and at night. It's, it's beautiful. Well, there's a hundred endangered species just living in that, you know, in that one river delta, so... Yeah, it's, it is truly an amazing place. And it has such a huge biodiversity. It wouldn't surprise me if there are animals out there in that region that we are yet to discover. Well, it is the perfect environment for it. So far, we've heard accounts of three different underwater creatures that defy explanation. With more and more people venturing on the water these days, you'd think someone would reel one of these monsters in. But over time, these creatures seem to be becoming more elusive. Sightings of sea and lake monsters are actually declining. Why could that be? Is there something going on in our oceans that we're not aware of? Earlier, we heard this sound. This is called bloop. And it's the sound of a huge unknown underwater creature. Bloop was first detected in 1997 by US Navy spy microphones set 3,000 miles apart in the deep sea. They were put in place to detect the movement of Soviet submarines during the Cold War. But they caught something even bigger. Analyzing the frequency of the sound. Scientists know two things. It's coming from an animal. And whatever it is, it's bigger and louder than the largest whale in the ocean. But how can we be sure that the recording doesn't have a more logical explanation? The bloop sound was supplied to Animal X by NOAA, the United States National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. To find out more about the mysterious bloop, Noah has turned the noise into a spectrogram. A spectrogram is a picture of the sound. Now they can compare the bloop against known phenomena. This is the spectrogram and sound of an undersea earthquake. These are blue whales. And this is the sound of a ship. None of these look anything like bloop. But if there's some giant monster down there, Noah is determined to find out. As I said earlier, even though more people are venturing out onto the world's waters, the number of sightings of sea and lake monsters is diminishing. So, what's happening to our oceans? Natalie's put that question to marine ecologist, aquanaut, Dr. Mark Hay. If you could pick one factor that is responsible for 
the problems that we're seeing in our oceans, what would it be? Um, the factor I would pick would be overfishing. In other words, it, uh, fish on coral reefs are critical in removing seaweeds that overgrow and kill corals. And we've seen, even in really remote areas, these, these boats can come through and, and totally deplete a reef in a couple of weeks. And so, in my lifetime, or my academic lifetime, the single thing that I think has produced the biggest effect is, is severe overfishing. We've had a really hard time managing fisheries. And the reason is because you don't need to manage fisheries, you need to manage people. And, and politically, um, that's very difficult for us. And so I really think that the main things we need to worry about in, in the coming years, I think um, environmental sustainability and human health and those two things interacting are going to be the things that humans have to deal with in the next hundred years.